In this video, we're going to take a look at how to write algebraic expressions. Um, a lot of this is just reading slowly, not trying to rush through um, sort of what's being written in words and try guessing at what is in math. It's reading the terminology. It's a lot of the same words that you've known since you were younger. Okay, so keywords. Hopefully, you have the, you might have this chart in your your notes from earlier. Anytime I see the word plus or the sum or more than, I'm going to deal with addition. So when I look at m plus 45 or number m plus 45, so something like this, I can say it could be a number m plus 45, the sum of number m and 45, or 45 more than a number m. Okay. So those are all words that basically mean addition, the fact that I'm adding. The next sort of value or expression that I'm going to look at is expressions that involve subtraction or minus signs. Okay, This gets a little bit tricky um, in the way that it can be worded because order does matter. So if I say the number p minus 6, I'm going to deal with writing at p minus 6. Same thing with the difference of a number p and 6. It's p minus 6 as well. Okay. Now you'll notice that it's sort of in the order. p comes first, then 6 for, for minus and for difference. When I begin to look at 6 subtracted from, or I'm also going to add 6 less than, A number P. You'll notice that it still has the order P minus 6 and we're going to touch a reason um, on the reasoning behind this um, on the following page. Um, but these all mean that P minus 6 is the order. Okay. When I'm beginning to look at multiplication, I'm dealing with 4 times a number K or the product. Product means multiplication. And I can rewrite it as 4k, which basically means 4 times k. I can also write it in parentheses for parentheses k. These are three different ways of writing multiplication. When I'm dealing with just a number and a variable, I will write it like this, the 4 with the k with no symbol in between. And then last but not least, when I begin to look at division, I can deal with the word quotient or a number divided by. And there's two ways of writing this. You can write the division sign, which you have been writing since you first learned division, or what we'll be working on a little bit later this year is to understand that the fraction bar actually is another way of writing division. It means division as well. Now to return to something that I talked about a little bit before, particularly with subtraction. If you're not sure how to write something, think about what you would do if it was a number instead of a variable. So for the example, what is 6 less than a number m, for example? Well, let's say, what would you think... Or what would you know if I s let you think about what is 6 less than 20? Well, let's say you have 6 less than 20. Well, doesn't that equal 14? What did you do? Didn't you really do 20 minus 6? Because it didn't make sense to write as 6 minus 20. So because of this, what's 6 less than 20 being 14? and thinking 20 minus 6, I can then just say, well, I didn't really have 20. 20 took the place of m, so my expression needs to be written m minus 6. Okay, not 6 minus m. So just be careful when it says less than or subtracted from. You have to reverse the order. Otherwise, I would just read this as m minus 6. 
Okay. One other thing that you're going to need to do is to be able to write an expression from a table of values. This, in order to do this, you really need to find, figure out what the pattern is. So if I have x and I have y, for example, okay, or let's just say x, and then I don't know what this really is. Okay, that would be more appropriate. Let's say when x is 1, this value is 4. When x is 3, this value is 6. When this value is 9, this value would be 12. So I'm always going to begin with the x value. But what's being done to the x value? One thing to check is, well, is anything being added? Well, 1 plus what would give me 4? 1 plus 3. Well, let's check. What happens when I add 3? What happens when I add 3? Okay, they all hold true. So my expression would be x plus 3 would be what goes in place of the question mark. That shows the relationship between x and what I have in the right-hand side. Now, if I had thought that 1 times 4 would give me 4, that would be true as well. But what's 3 times 4? It would be 12, not 6. So that's kind of a good idea that, oh, that's not the right pattern. Okay. Let's have, suppose I asked you to find this pattern. Okay. Once again, I could begin and say, okay, from here to here, let's suppose I had to add 8. Well, what happens when I go from here to here and try and add 8? 5 plus 8 isn't 25. So what that gives me a kind of an idea about is that I need to revise what I have written. So let's try multiplication. 2 times 5 gives me 10. 5 times 5 gives me 25. 8 times 5 gives me 40. So instead, what I have in the right-hand column is really 5 times the value of x. Okay, And these can get a little bit more complicated or confusing. So let's say I had x and y, or x again. I keep wanting to put the y on that side. Let's suppose x is 80 and this value is 10. Let's suppose this value is 40 this value is 5. This value is 8. This value is 1. Now you'll notice that the values go down from 80 down to 10, 40 down to 5, 8 down to 1. So this would denote or kind of clue you in that you're probably going to want to subtract or divide. Well, 80 minus 70 would give me 10, but 40 minus 70 wouldn't give me 5. So let's try dividing. 8 divided by 8, or 80 divided by 8 would give me 10. 40 divided by 8 would give me 5. 8 divided by 8 would give me 1. So therefore, I can take the x value and divide by 8, which I can also write as the x over 8 as well. One of these two ways of writing would be good. So anyway, this comes with a little bit of practice, but hopefully this video has been helpful.